Hello Android developers! I'm back with another Android developer tips video. In this video, I want to talk about the Jetpack Startup Library. As an app or library developer, you may need to initialize your components at the app startup. One solution is initializing your components inside the application class one after another. Another smart solution that libraries like Leak Canary or Firebase are using is to define content providers. As you may already know from my previous video about Leak Canary, content providers are being initialized before application class, and it's a good time to prepare your components for the app run at the startup. You can start defining content providers for every component inside your app or library, but there are two issues. First, defining all those content providers has an impact on the app startup time, and maintaining them is not that much easy. Second, what if the priority matters and you want to make sure a component is initialized before another one? Instead of defining separate content providers for each component, you can initialize the Android X Jetpack startup library that allows you to define component initializers that share a single content provider. This can significantly improve your app startup time. Based on the documentation, the app startup library provides a straightforward, performant way to initialize components at application startup. Both library developers and app developers can use app startup to streamline a startup sequence and explicitly set the order of initialization. Before taking a look into the sample app and doing the implementation, if you are new to this channel, I talk about useful tips and everything to do to be a better Android developer. Plus, I interview the Android community's active members and more. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it and subscribe to this channel to support and see more of this content. Let's take a look into the implementation. For each component, you have to define an initializer by creating a class that implements the initializer interface. This interface defines two important methods. The create method, which contains all the necessary operations to initialize the component. The dependencies method, which returns a list of other initializer objects that this initializer depends on. You can use this method to control the order of running initializer at the app startup. After that, you have two options. First option is to set up the app manifest by adding the initialization provider, content provider, and your component initializers as its metadata. And the second option is to manually initializing the components using the app initializer without changing your manifest. Keep in mind that if you want to mix these two options, you must first disable the automatic initialization for any components that you want to initialize manually by removing them from the manifest. In my sample app, I'm initializing the timber library for debug builds inside the application class and create method, which I like to move it to a startup initializer. To start, we need to add the startup library dependencies. Later, I will create a startup package to put my initializers inside. Now let's create a class called Timber Initializer that implements a startup initializer. Since the Timber library works as a singleton, we can define a unit initializer that has no return type. Also, initializing Timber has no dependency on any other initializer. Therefore, we can return an empty list as the implementation of the dependencies method.
It's time to add the initialization provider to the app manifest and the timber initializers as a metadata. We can now run the app and check if Timber initializes normally. We can also debug and confirm that the Timber initializer runs before the application on create method. That's it. I hope you find this useful for your Android app or library. Please do not forget to like and share this video with other Android developers and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. See you soon on another Android developer tips video. Bye!